In this video we're going to check the valve clearance on a Yamaha V-Star 650 Custom. In order to get to the valve covers we're going to have to uh, remove everything. So we'll start off with removing the seats, the fuel tank, and uh, surge box, and carburetors. To start off we'll remove the uh, this nut here 14 millimeters. Once you have the passenger seat removed, there's two 5mm uh, bolts holding the main seat on. Just pull those guys out, and the seat will just lift and slide out. There we go. Once you have the seats removed, we're going to remove the instrument panel. Before we do this though, we're going to go down here and remove the uh, speedometer cable. It's a, uh, I believe it's a 12mm. Uh, not over here. So we'll remove that. Um, by doing so, you'll create a lot of slack under the instrument panel. It'll be easier to lift this up and uh, disconnect all the uh, connectors that are under there. So we'll go ahead and take that off with a uh, four millimeter uh, Allen wrench. All right, now that we've disconnected the speedometer from the front wheel, we uh, took off these um, four millimeter bolts. Now we can just pull this whole unit up. There might be a bit of resistance, that's just a speedometer cable. And there you go. Now you can access everything in here. And uh, disconnect the speedometer from here. And unplug your uh, wiring harnesses down here. With the instrument panel removed, we can now go down to the petcock. Turn it into the off position. You can disconnect this uh, fuel line by squeezing this clamp and bringing it over. When you pull this out, just have a claw, a rag or something handy to catch any fuel that may spill out. And when that's done, we're going to remove this 12 millimeter bolt on this side. There's one on the opposite side, and the fuel tank will just lift and come forward or back. Okay, the fuel tank's ready to come off now. We've uh, taken off those bolts and disconnected the fuel line. Your um, connectors here and the speedometer cable at the top here, just get them lined up so when you pull the tank off, they'll just go right through that hole. So you just uh, can gently ease up the tank on the bottom and it'll come free on the top there. There you go. Next up is to remove the air filter assembly. There's um, uh, a five millimeter bolt here, another one here, and then a screwdriver to remove the hose clamp here that connects the uh, air filter to the search box. So we're gonna pull, disconnect that and these two uh, bolts. All right, the hose clamp disconnected up here. These two bolts removed. We just gotta pull out the bottom of the uh, air filter it's got a plug that's kind of pushed in there, a rubber uh, plug. I'll just give that a pull. And up down, and off comes your filter. Next, we're just going to disconnect the cylinder head breather hose from here, from the search tank. And we're going to take the screw off of the search tank duct. To disconnect the search tank from the carburetors, there are two hose clamps. One right back here. The other located way back here. Disconnect those and the search tank will come off. With the cylinder head vent hose removed, disconnected, and the um, two clamps on the intake head of the carburetors open, we can just grab this uh, search box and pull it out. Right next we're going to disconnect the uh, carburetor uh, vent hose, which is down here. Um, these things get stuck on there pretty well, so you can just, uh, I guess with all this heat and stuff, you can just take a screwdriver flathead and uh, just slide it off. There we go. Next we're going to remove the fuel cut solenoids using a 19 millimeter wrench. But just before you do that, follow the wires to the top of the bike and see where they plug in. They have a connector for each solenoid. Unplug those first. Watch for fuel when you take these off. There may be some left over in your bike. And keep track of which one's which. 
I wrote them down on a whiteboard I keep in my toolbox, so I'll uh, know which one will go back where. Watch that this wire doesn't get twisted up, and keep in mind that there are there is a little washer underneath here. Try not to lose that. So once you remove the solenoids one at a time, I plug them back into their respective connectors and just keep them to the back of the bike, keep them out of the way. Next we're going to disconnect a thermal switch, that's this guy, it's connected to the carb heaters and the throttle position sensor we're going to disconnect also, that's this thick wire right here. Next we're going to disconnect the hose clamp for the fuel line which is located at the rear of the carburetor. That is right here. I'm going to disconnect that. Alright, so to disconnect the choke, we uh, open the screw over here and just give this a pull. The cable will slide out and then you can uh, pull this guy through here. With the fuel cut solenoids removed, the two 3 mil hose clamps disconnected from the intake manifold, the choke cable disconnected, the thermal switch, throttle position sensor, and carburetor vent hose underneath, and the fuel line disconnected from the carburetors. We're now going to pull the carburetor off of the intake manifold and rest it on top of the frame so we can get to the um, throttle cables. Just watch for fuel pouring out of here when you do this. There might be some left. Get this up. Pull it through the frame, hope I'm not blocking the camera, and set it on top of the bike. Just uh, plugging up the holes here with some uh, shop rags. There. Just to keep anything from uh, going here. Next we're going to disconnect the throttle cables from the carburetor. To do so we're going to open the pull cable first, which is this one. Pull cable can be identified by this uh, adjuster on the top here and it's on the carburetor, it's the part that pulls. This one doesn't go anywhere. So this one you have to pull it on this side. So that's how you can tell where it's connected and which one is what. So to do that, we're gonna open the adjuster here, the lock nut here, bring the cable through, and I hope I'm not blocking you. Pull this guy off here. And it's a 10 mil wrench to do that. And you can do the same with the uh, um, push cable. So open the lock nut, and you have your slack, just bring it around, disconnect it like that, and now our carburetor is removed from the bike. Okay, so now we're going to remove the uh, cylinder head cover. Um, I'm going to do the, the front one first, and uh, keep your spark plug plugged in for now. Five millimeter, I believe, take this off, there's um, two bolts up here and then uh, two on the other side. All right, with the four bolts removed now, we're just going to, uh, I moved the other stuff out of the way, the throttle cables were dangling down. Watch your fuel filter, there might be fuel in there still. Um, just uh, slide this cover. But now we're going to remove the lower cover, which is, there's a bolt here, one here, and uh, on the other side. So for the rear cover, we're going to pretty much do the same thing. There's a uh, five millimeter uh, bolts on either both sides. Okay, with those uh, four bolts removed, now we can slide this cover out. Just watch the uh, hose here. There's a if your clamp is still on it, just uh, watch it doesn't fall off. Um, everything, all your connectors and all these things hanging around, just um, watch where they are, that they don't snag on anything, but then uh, this will just slide forward. And that is the rear upper cover. To remove the lower cylinder head cover, there's just uh, two bolts. One here, one on the other side. 
All right, so when removing the lower cylinder head cover for the rear, um, there's a little plug up here. That'll just come off when you pry everything out. Just pull, and same on the other side. Also, just pay attention to these uh, things in the hole here, These this little uh, metal uh, washer, or what is it, like a collar type thing. These can come out with the bolt, so just uh, be careful you don't lose any. They're on all the, uh, the covers. Okay, so now we can remove the, the timing and rotating rotator plug covers. And then after that, we can remove the uh, cam sprocket covers and the uh, cylinder head covers. So I'll open uh, those up first. Okay, with those open up now, we can open up the cam sprocket covers with those two bolts up there. With those bolts removed, you can just Pull this out, pull gently. Oh, and make sure you've got uh, the top cleaned all around just so you don't get anything uh, falling inside. Okay, so now we can remove the valve cover. It's two 10 millimeter bolts, one here, one back there. So when you're taking these valve covers off, just make sure the area is nice and clean. Clean around them all, just so when you take it off, there's not, no debris falling in there. And you may need a screwdriver to pop the covers off. Just be gentle, because there's a O-ring inside. Before we uh, start checking the valve clearances, we're going to uh, remove the spark plugs. You can go ahead and take both out. Right, so now we're going to put a 15 millimeter uh, socket into the camshaft and we're going to turn it clockwise until we see a little T indicator on the rotor. So. So I don't know if you can see that, there's a little T indicator in there, but there's a little notch in the top. So we want to align those by turning the uh, crankshaft. So I'm going to do that, it's just uh, hard to pick up on the camera. And when that happens, we're supposed to align this pointer with, where is it, this dot down here. So we're going to turn it until they uh, line up. Put the 14mm uh, socket in here and just Keep turning it until uh, the indicator here is aligned with the point. Um, so you're going to turn it, the T will line up here, but the indicator might be down here. So turn it until they're both lined up and there'll be a little, uh, oops, there'll be a little uh, free play up here. You can, I don't know if you can hear it, but, but yeah, so now we can, uh, Check it with the uh, feeler gauge. With everything at top dead center now, we can check our valve clearance. The clearance is supposed to be between 0 0.07 millimeters and 0.12 millimeters. I'm going to start off with a 0.08 to see if it'll fit in there. And it does fairly easily. So let's see what a 0 0.10 does. Point one zero fits in there fairly easily, and a point one three, yeah, it just barely fits, but it does fit. So I'm gonna have to close that gap a bit. In order to do so, you don't want to keep your tools close by, get comfortable. Um, keep your feeler gauge, three millimeter hex key, ten millimeter wrench, and uh, I'm just sitting on a tire right now because it does take a bit of um, toying with to get this. What we're gonna do is uh, open the lock nut on the adjuster screw. So just gently turn that. And now you can put a hex key in there. Okay, so now we can adjust our uh, clearance. All right, lock nut loosened. I'm gonna slide the 0.08 millimeter feeler gauge between the valve stem and the adjusting screw. So as you, it's moving quite freely there. So now I'm gonna tighten down the, the adjusting screw until it pinches that feeler gauge. And there it's pretty tight. There it can move. So 
So I'm gonna do it when it's just, just gone. Like so. And very carefully tighten down your lock nut. That's why you don't want to turn your lock nut too much also. So just try to keep your um, adjusting screw still while tightening the lock nut. Okay, so now let's check again. 0 0.08 millimeters. Doesn't want to fit. So I'm going to open this back up. So, lock nut. Now let's tighten it back. 0 0.08. It does fit. Point one zero. Met with a lot of resistance, but it does. Ah, uh, it fits. Point one three. Point one three doesn't want to fit. So you know, I'm gonna keep it at that. Now that I've, uh, since I got that locked down. Um, before I keep it at that though, I'm going to uh, turn the crankshaft again and um, find our position and just make sure everything's staying where it is. Uh, just drop my finger gauge. So I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to do it twice. So I just passed my mark again. Oh, I don't know how many times this is now. I'm gonna drop and everything. Okay, I rotated it. Okay. Alright, so I rotated the uh, crankshaft a few times. I'm going to try the 0 0.08 again. It does slide in there. Let's try the 0 0.10. 0 0.10. It's sliding fairly easy. 0.13. Point one three doesn't want to go. Let's try point one zero again. Point one zero again. It is grabbing it. I feel like I should uh, tighten it just to, well. That's point one zero. So I just tightened down the lock nut just a little bit because it wasn't fully tight. And Point oh eight does fit in there, but I'm feeling it's a little stiff. Well, not. It is fitting. Try point one zero. Point one zero is fitting. Point one three. Point one three doesn't want to fit. So you don't want to leave it at that. Um, 
gonna cover back this up and uh, just make sure um, your O-rings, everything are uh, good condition and cleaned up. Ideally, like you'd be putting in new O-rings, but whatever. And let's get things going. When you get your cover back on, torque the bolts to 10 newton meters or 7.3 foot pounds. All right, with the rear intake valve cover back on, we can move over to the exhaust cover, which is on this side, the back of the uh, cam sprocket there. So there's two bolts once again. With the screws removed, the the, um, the screw on the far side here was easier to remove with the battery cover off. It's just a 10 mil hex key to take that off, or sorry, a 5 mil hex key to take that off, and then the bolt 10 mil, and there's your cover. The procedure is the same this time. It's a 0.12 millimeters to 0.17. So I've got a 0.13 uh, feeler gauge. So let's slide that in, and also we don't have to turn the uh, crankshaft over because it's already set from last time at top dead center so 0.13 it's uh it's actually really good it's gripping it well but it's uh moving through let's try 0.15 0.15 like yeah it's like just got it it's, or just letting it through let's try 0.20 yeah, point, point two zero is not going to go in there. Um, I like how this is looking, so I'm, I'm probably just going to leave this one. But first, I'm just going to turn the uh, crankshaft over just to see how that will affect it. Let's find top dead center again. Match up our marks. Okay, marks are lined up. Let's check this again. We'll do the 0.13 millimeters first. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is uh, dragging. 0.15. Yeah, 0.15. Point two. Yeah, point two doesn't want to go. Point eighteen. This is actually a ten and a point zero eight, so that doesn't want to go. So you know what? These clearances are actually really good, so I'm gonna leave this one alone. So you can put your uh, exhaust valve cover back on. I wouldn't worry too much if you can't get your torque wrench to fit back there. It is only like 7.38 foot pounds or whatever it was, 10 nanometers. And uh, we'll put back on the uh, uh, sprocket cover over here, cam sprocket cover. All right, so before we install the uh, cam sprocket cover, just give it a look and make sure you've uh, got a clean area. Also where the cam sprocket is, make sure everything's nice and clean. Make sure your O-ring's all right, and then it'll just snap into place. Just be gentle. side in. All right, now we can put our bolts back in. And we'll check the torque again. And it's actually the same uh, spec as those, uh, 10, uh, or 10 newton meters, 7.3 foot pounds. With everything torqued down, now we can move over to the other side and remove the front cam sprocket cover. To remove the front cam sprocket cover, there are two bolts, just like the last one. There's one here and one here. Um, there's this uh, bracket here, but it shouldn't be in the way. You should be able to get that out and uh, pull it down and out. If I wipe down the top just to uh, make sure there's no debris, it's gonna be there and then now uh, see how this pops off. Try not to block the light. There we go. Probably a good idea to wipe down around your uh, o-ring on the plate here. 
now we can go ahead and remove the intake valve cover, which is this one right here, and it's right beside the intake, so that's only to tell also the exhaust one's on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these two bolts. With those bolts removed, we can just pop the cover off. There we go. I also uh, clean around the top just to make sure there's no uh, shit going to fall in there. With the valve cover open and the uh, cam sprocket cover open, I'm going to go on the other side and uh, turn the crankshaft until we get this line up the top dead center. Now when you're doing the front cylinder, it has it's you're going to match it up with a little I, not a T mark, it's an I mark. That's the I mark I'm talking about that you're going to have to line up. Fortunately it's on this side so you got to go back and forth until you uh, find out if you're uh, there. So we got the indicator in the right spot on the other side and over here it's uh, looking good also. On the front cylinder it can be off a full tooth sometimes so that's actually uh, where it should be. So now we can go ahead and check our valve clearances. Alright so now we can go ahead and check our clearances. This is the intake valve of the front cylinder so it should be 0.07 to 0.12 millimeters. So I'm going to go on the other side now and check see how this goes. 0 0.08 0 0.08 is sliding through let's try 0 0.10 0 0.10 is uh, I could feel some drag there try 0.13 one is going through fairly easy. So again, I'm gonna have to uh, adjust the intake valve. Open the lock nut. The lock nut open, we get the 0 0.08 fuel gauge, put them in there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down, see how that works out. Alright, that tightened down, let's check with our fuel gauges again. 0.08. So 0.08 is going. 0 0.10. 0 0.10 does not want to go. So I'm going to open this up again. So I just open it up a bit and tighten it back down. Let's try 0 0.08. Point 0.10. It's 
looking better. Point one three. Point one three doesn't want to go. So I'm just gonna tighten this a bit more. Point zero eight. Zero. Point one three. Yeah. So right, so let's try this again. Point zero eight. Fits. I can feel some nice drag. I think this is going to be it. 0 0.10. Oh, then we've got some drag. 0 0.13. 0 0.13 isn't fitting. So I'm keeping these settings. I'm keeping it at that. So we go ahead and replace this valve cover now. All right, that valve, valve cover is back on and torque to spec. Now we will move over to the front. The front exhaust valve cover is um, hidden behind the horn. It's just uh, it's kind of just deep back there. So you can go ahead and remove that just as you did the other ones. All right, for the exhaust valve it's 0.12 to 0.17 millimeters i don't know if i can if you can see this because uh i'm gonna be blocking the light but this is 0 0.13 0 0.13 does go in there let's try 0.20 Point two zero won't fit. Let's try point one five. Point one five. Oh yeah, that fits with some resistance. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, I'm happy with this one. I'm gonna leave this one also. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this cover back on. That's pretty much it for valve clearances. Before we put everything back together though, I just want to touch upon the throttle cables. We had removed those from the carburetor. When we put those back on, we want to make sure they're not twisted. We want to make sure they're on securely. And before you go anywhere with the bike running, just twist your handlebars left, right, left, right. And that just, uh, listen to the engine. If you hear that engine RPM go up on you, there might be an issue there. Now we can uh, put the front cam sprocket cover back on. I wiped down the area and uh, make sure it was free of dirt, just uh, on both parts. Just slide this under the uh, bracket and push her in. With the front cam sprocket cover back on, go ahead and torque that down. It's uh, 7.3 foot pounds. Go ahead and uh, put everything back together. Replace the covers. This one here. This guy down here. Just make sure everything's nice and clean before you do this. I put the um, spark plugs back and I put the, whatever this thing is back on. Now I'm gonna put um, both of the lower covers on and the upper covers. Put the, uh, the boots back in the, onto the spark plugs. The upper and lower cylinder head covers are back on. Now I'm gonna uh, put the carburetor back on. Well, first I'm gonna connect the uh, push and pull cables to the throttle. 
power push and pull cables were put back on and uh, just make sure when you're doing this that you don't get the um, the cables here twisted like don't twist them around I've seen that before but uh yeah just check your throttle too make sure you got some uh, free play there now's a good time to loop it but I'm actually running out of time so um, I'm gonna do that another time now we're gonna put the carburetor back onto the intake manifold so when you're uh, putting the carburetor back on your um, the nut the bolt way back there that you used to tighten it it's the one in the background the furthest one um, tighten it all the way to the spacer and uh, open it as much as you can before you push the carburetor down and uh, check both sides make sure that it's sitting properly you don't want any leaks there and then tighten them right down to the spacer but uh, push them down you'll know when they, they drop down you'll feel it all right and uh, now we're just going to connect back that breather hose so now I'm going to connect back the uh, solenoids this one was the rear one actually and don't forget there was a washer that went with them connected both fuel cut solenoids connected the thermal switch connected the throttle position sensor connected the clutch cable on that side um, just have to tighten this back down once you lock it in here hope you can see that um, let's keep going uh, fuel line has been connected to the rear carburetor um, the uh, carburetor vent hose has been connected to that part on the frame on the back here down there if you can see it and now we can put the search box back on oh yeah just keep in mind do you want to keep um, this thing handy this breather and your choke cable when you um, when you're putting all the stuff on you want to keep it so you, uh, keep it accessible so air box and duct are onto the carburetors and ready for the air filter. Um, when you're putting the air box onto the carburetors, just watch how you're doing it. If those clamps are tightened too much, it'll slip right off of the carburetors. Anyway, remember to put that cylinder head breather hose to the back of the surge tank. When you're installing your fuel tank, remember the front end of it goes in first, the back end will drop down, the choke cable goes between the bolt and the mounting bracket of the fuel tank on the left side. Connect your fuel line. Your speedometer cable will connect to the instrument panel first then the wiring harnesses push that down and the speedometer cable can be mounted to the front wheel when you're mounting the speedometer cable to the front wheel it fits into the hole it's a square hole with a square cable so line that up where your speedometer won't work and put your seats on you can go ahead and put on your air filter your uh, covers that you've taken off this is where I'm gonna end it because I'm actually in the process of putting on a hypercharger so the reason for this video was for that and I figured I'll tackle the um, valve covers at the same time but all right take care there it is